Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to introduce you to a very very interesting but also very 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 weird feature coming in C Sharp 12. Now, I have to preface this by saying that this is experimental, it is in preview, they aim to release it for .NET 8 and C Sharp 12, but you never know with these features. But in this video I'm going to give you a first preview and explain why it's something you might want to take a look at when it comes out, because that kind of shows you the future of .NET and where .NET is going, and it actually aligns with everything we hear from people like Madge or Damien or David, these big influential people in Microsoft building this stuff. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, and for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple .NET 8 console application here. It doesn't really have anything. And the feature I'm going to be showcasing is called interceptors. Now, this word has been floating around in different places with different meanings, and it might not mean exactly what you think it will mean in this context, so I'm going to make it very, very easy for you to understand. But you have to know that this is in preview, and it's going to be released in preview, meaning that you will have to explicitly opt in to the feature because it's going to be experimental even at release. And to opt in the feature, you have to go to the CS project and say features, interceptors, preview, you to basically enable the feature into C Sharp 12 when that's out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this following class here. This is just a simple example class and I'm going to use it to have some sort of instantiation of some class. So I'm going to say example here and then I'm going to call this my method with world as the parameter. So when I run this, this will print hello world as you'd expect. Now what I want to do is actually make three versions of this. And this is not a practical example, I just want to show you the feature here, so you wouldn't normally use it in this context. But let's say that this method I want to leave as it is, but this invocation and this invocation of the method, I actually want to sort of capture and change or intercept. How would I do that? Well, there's AOP frameworks that might allow you to do that, and you can do some fancy things, but C Sharp itself doesn't really have anything built into it. You'd have to do either IL weaving, which is what AOP would normally do with libraries like Post Sharp, or you have to emit code in runtime, and that actually becomes very tricky when you want to do things like ahead of time compilation. In, in fact, one of the biggest motivators, if not the biggest motivator, of what you're going to see in this video and why this feature exists is AOT, because .NET is rapidly shifting towards full ahead of time compilation. So what I can do to intercept these methods now with this feature is the following. I'm going to say generated code, and I'm going to explain why I call it generated code in a second. But for now, I'm just going to create this class. And then I'm going to create the methods I want to intercept this other method with and replace. So I'm going to say public static void in here. I'm going to make this class static as well. And I'm going to say my interceptor method. And this will be an extension method on the example, the thing that contains the method I want to intercept. So I'm going to say example here. And then since that thing, that method has a string parameter, I want to have that here as well. So I have the ability to capture it. In the meantime, let's make this public so it works here. So now I have an extension method and I have the interceptor method. So what I can do is I can say console.writeline hello brave new and then the parameter. So a different implementation. Now, of course, if I just run this as it is, you're going to get the same thing three times. Nothing really happens. But what I can do now with this feature is use the intercept location attribute. And if I do that and I say, hey, here is a path to the file containing the invocation I want to intercept. I know this is a bit weird, but basically what this wants is the location of, in my case, the program.cs. So what I'm going to say is copy over here the absolute path of this file. So just paste it here. And then what else do you need? Well, it actually, let me show you. It needs the line you want to intercept. In this case, it is one, two, three, four, five. I'm laughing because it is pretty clunky, but this will all make sense in a second. So line five and then character, where does the method start? On which character? It's here. So not the dot, but the actual method invocation. And I can see in my ID that this is line five and character nine. So I can use nine here. And if I do this, and if I go ahead and I run this now, watch what happens. I have hello world and I have hello brave new world as a second invocation because the interceptor actually comes in here and replaces this. Let's debug this to see how it works. I know it's very trippy. 
I know it's a weird feature, but it actually will make sense when you understand the use cases. So first, if I step into this method, of course, we're going to go into this my method hello world. However, if I step into this, yes, I will put a breakpoint here, but you'll see we won't actually go there because the intercept location hijacks the invocation and says, oh, you won't go there. You will actually come in this interceptor method and you're going to say what I want. So even if I say step into, it's not going to go in here. It intercepted it in compile time, which is super important to understand because that's the whole point, not runtime, but compile time. And it has full access to the parameter as well. And then in the end, we just use the other invocation. Now, what you should know is that you can have multiple of these attributes here. So if you wanted to intercept multiple lines with this same call, you could. In fact, I could do both this and this. So if I do that and I run it, then you're going to see that the two second lines will be the same. Or what I could do, of course, is I can just duplicate the whole thing and have two of them. So intercept both the first and the second one with two separate methods. And this will be the hello crazy world in this case. And then interceptor two. So if I go ahead and I run this, I just intercepted from outside to the inside these two methods. Now, in the beginning of this proposal, there used to be a thing where you could use the inter acceptable method over here to basically opt into being intercepted and the attribute would look something like this over here so what you do is say yeah this method over here this is interceptable it does not seem to be the case anymore i don't know if they're going to bring it back or not i understand them not using it because ultimately what they're trying to do is be able to inspect your code and rewrite it at compile time but yeah that's the design we're currently looking at i'm going to link the proposal in the description of the video in case you want to try this out yourself and provide feedback as well because that's the whole point why this is in preview so we can sit and give some feedback now a few things you might be wondering first what the hell? Why do we have this full path of the location of the file over here? And how am I supposed to get it when I write this code? Well, the truth is, you are not really supposed to write this by hand. I mean, you can. I clearly just did it. But you're not really expected to. The whole point of this existing is actually for source generators to be able to write this code. And that's the same reason we got things like the file keyword in C Sharp as well. Lots of stuff needed in source generators because Microsoft needs them because they want to turn .NET into a fully AOT project or framework. And for that to be a thing, those things need to be in place because you cannot have runtime code emission, dynamic assembly loading, so many things in AOT. So they try to lay the ground to allow themselves to optimize and enable native AOT even further. But then you might be wondering, where is the source generator supposed to get this location over here? Well, actually, that is not as hard as you'd think. In fact, you can have something like this over here, where you can have a get interceptor file path method, and you can quickly just add the microsoft.codeanalysis.common file over here, or NuGet package, sorry. And the moment you do that, then you can use this to resolve the name during compilation. There's techniques and source generator authors know how to do this. So don't worry too much about these things. These are supposed to be source generated and they can be source generated reliably. So it's not something you will write by hand most. I mean, you can, especially if you want to mess with your colleagues, but don't. I didn't tell you that. Now, if you're anything like me, you might be wondering why, like, why is this being added? Well, like I said, AOT is the main reason why this is being added to be used by source generators or in general by .NET itself. And the idea is that they're able to detect things in your code that can be optimized and replaced. And then they can actually use an interceptor to allow these methods to be intercepted. For example, things like regex.isMatch. They can take a look at that and then replace it with a statically generated matcher instead of one that is emitted in runtime. Same with things like minimal API endpoints or dependency injection. You can have something like a dot register or dot add call and then that will be replaced with a static compile time safe version of that same thing without using reflection so it ultimately lays the ground into a better future for dotnet and that's why we're getting this now i do highly recommend you use that link in the description you go and you give some feedback you try this out and you give your opinion because that's why it is in preview and it doesn't just come out straight away they have doubts they want to know and it's up to you to provide some feedback. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this feature? And do you have any worries that it can actually be abused by different NuGet package authors? I don't know, it's just a thought. 
but I'm really curious to see what you think. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.